Welcome everybody to another episode of Coffee with Marcus. I got my coffee, do you have yours? So today will be a super exciting session because today I want to show you how to take advantage of a stock market crash, but it's not what you think it is. So super excited. Uh, let's just see if everybody is here, can see me and can hear me. And uh, when we're all live, leave a comment, click like really quick, and then we get started. I don't want to wait long, but I want to make sure that uh, that the video is good. So team, if you can see me, uh, can you see me on Facebook and on YouTube? Because that's what we're trying to do to go live at the same time on YouTube and Facebook. <clears throat> all right, we're good on YouTube. How is Facebook doing? <laughs> Are we doing good? Are we good here? All right. Again, today is not what you think it will be when I'm talking about how to take advantage of the stock market crash, because you might think that I'm talking about, yeah, well, you should buy stocks or learn how to trade a falling market. No, it's even better. You'll see there are some fantastic opportunities that we have right now. So let's get started, shall we? <laughs> okay, good. All right, everybody's here. So. How to take advantage of a stock market crash. You see, last week, the stock market fell 12%. And this week, we are seeing a bounce. Uh, in fact, today, let me bring it up where we stand here right now. So let me just show you. See, today, the markets are going up 5%. So this is the bounce that we are seeing. But you see, I believe the worst is yet to come. So how to take advantage of a stock market crash. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. You see, the first question that comes to mind when talking about taking advantage of a stock market crash is, should you buy stocks during a crash? Now, you see, in general, that sounds like a good idea, but <laughs> here's the problem. You never know when we hit a bottom. Let's go back and take a look at the current market here. So. You see, have we reached a bottom right here? Or, oops, there we go. Or is this a dead cat bouncing that we see? Will the market now turn around and uh, go even lower? See, that's the problem. So buying stocks during a market crash, it's like, it's like catching a falling knife. It's dangerous and you can get hurt. So how do you make money when the stock market goes down? Well, there are two ways a short-term game and a long-term game. And right now I want to talk about both. So let's sort of talk about the short-term game, game, short -term game first. The short-term game is learn how to short stocks. Now, as a trader, as you know, you can sell stocks that you don't own. You have to do this in a margin account and this way you can make money in a falling market. Now, we talked about this several times. And I believe that this will be one of the most valuable skills this year. Learn how to make money in any market condition, whether it's going up or down. Now, as you already know, I like to use three indicators and the PowerX Optimizer software to find the best stocks to trade. And I don't want to go into too much detail in the video since I want to show you the, the long-term game because the long-term game is really fascinating. But if this is your first term, uh, first time that you hear me talking about these three indicators and uh, also the software, then you see, I have another video for you that shows you exactly um, what indicators I use, what settings I use. It shows you what software I use. So why don't I do this? I'll link to the video in the description and maybe even in a YouTube card here right now and you can watch it later. So that would be the short-term game. But let's talk about the long-term game. And the long-term game is how the rich, <laughs> and the long-term game is how the rich get richer. Now, this is really fascinating. You see, I never knew how the rich get richer even during a recession until I figured it out. See. I've been playing this game for years and what I'm about to show you has made me uh, has made me around three million dollars. So who's ready? Who wants to see it? If you want to see it, let me know right now in the comments. Say yes, 
or give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Okay, and then I'm going to show you exactly how it works. Okay, fantastic. So here's the deal. As the stock market crashes, the Fed is lowering interest rates. See, yesterday or on March 3rd, they did an emergency cut of 0.5%. Let me show this to you. So right now, this is what happened here to interest rates. So they made this emergency cut. And right now, interest rates are getting lower and lower. So what does this mean if interest rates are getting lower? Well, first of all, it means actually two things. Let me come back to you here on full screen. There we go. First of all, it means that borrowing money gets cheaper. As the Fed fund rate gets lower, mortgages and long-term loans are getting cheaper. So that's obvious. But there's something even more important. And that's number two. It will get easier to get loans. Think about it. How do banks make money? Through interest rates. So if interest rates are dropping, they will make less money. And uh, this is why you see that right now, major bank stocks are hurting. Bank stocks like JPM, JP Morgan, Bank of America, I mean, Citibank, all of these are hurting. And you see, and right now, it's very likely that the Fed will lower interest rates even more. Therefore, going forward over the next few months, banks will make even less money. And obviously, that's not what they want. So how can a bank make more money? Simple, by giving out more loans. It's simple math. The more loans they hand out, the more money they make. But, but, but think about it. Do you think they hand out a, a $5,000 loan to poor people who want to buy a new TV or do you think the banks would rather hand out a million dollar loan to an investor who buys real estate with it? Obviously, the latter, because it makes more money and it is collateralized, meaning that the chances of them getting paid back are much higher than just, uh, I don't know, handing out credit cards or loans for TVs. You get the idea. So let me show you how exactly you can take advantage of it and get hundreds of thousands of dollars as a loan with super low interest rates. And then I'll show you how to use that money to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's a simple five-step process. I have personally done it several times and it works like a charm. So let me ask you, would you like to see this five-step process? Because if so, Click on like so that I see that you're enjoying this video. So do me a favor, click on like now and I'll show you the five step process, how you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars and then use that money to turn around and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. So click like. Okay, <laughs> good. Fantastic. All right, let's get started. Step number one, you need to know your credit score. Now, I'm living in the United States here, so I'm doing this right now for people who live in the United States, but I'm pretty sure that this works universally all around the world. So the first thing to know your credit score is you go to creditkarma.com and sign up for free. It's, it's really free because there you can check your credit score. So once you do, you'll see something like this. Let me actually log into my credit karma so that you see exactly what it looks like. So you see, sign up for free. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, username, password. I'm putting it in here. And then here's what you see. You will see your credit score. See uh, whether you have a, a good or a decent credit score. And you also can see credit score details. Let me show you this really quick because you want to know why do you have a good credit score or why do you think that there's room for improvement? So you see payment history, 99%, credit card use, 2%. So that's uh, my credit score here. Derogatory uh, marks, nothing. Uh, credit age, four years, eight months. So this is pretty much having the highest impact right now. That's why I'm not at an 800. 
why I'm only at 750, but there's a reason for it, and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Total accounts, look at this, 32 accounts. But you see, it has a very low impact. It doesn't matter how many accounts you have, and I wanna show you something really cool today. And there were a few, a few hard inquiries, three over the past, I don't know, whatever it is, uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, don't care. Anyhow, so this is what you see. That's step number one. You need to know your credit score. Step number two, actually I thought it was higher. Let me click on uh, an Equifax here. That's what I thought, 745, there we go. So step number two in this five-step process, how you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars. Step number two is improve your credit score. Now, Credit Karma makes it easy for you to improve your score. See, for most people, the easiest way to improve your credit score is to lower your credit card use. That's exactly what you saw here. Uh, the credit card use has a super high impact. And if you have a high credit card use, it is hurting your credit score. Now, you might not even know what it is right now. So that's why you should sign up with them. I'm not affiliated with Credit Karma at all. I mean, they don't even know that I'm mentioning them here. But you see, here's the deal. If you stay below 30%, it can make your score jump by 30 to 50 points. Let me come back to you on the screen. <clears throat> because there are three ways you can do it. Three ways how you can actually have a lower score. <clears throat> Number one, pay off your credit cards if you can, make sure that you have a low balance. And duh, that sounds obvious, but not everybody can do it. But here's number two, and this is what everybody can do. Step number two, call your credit card company and ask them to raise your limit. As I said earlier, right now is a great time to ask for more credit. It doesn't cost you anything, and half of the time they will say yes. You know, in, in fact, I know that I have somewhere a cheat sheet for you, how to do it the right way, how to ask them the right way. And here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I will post this right underneath the video uh, that you know how to ask them to increase your credit limit because this way your credit utilization automatically drops down. Now, step number three or the third possibility that you can do is get another credit card with a higher limit and then transfer your balances. Again, this is where Credit Karma makes it easy for you uh, by just showing you your chance of approval. You see, you can simply click on uh, Credit Cards Marketplace right here, and then you see, you know what? For your credit score right now, the following credit cards are available, and they show you right here your chance of approval for a Platinum Express card is excellent. Now, here's the cool thing. When you get an American Express Platinum card, usually there is no preset limit. It's really cool. I actually have two of those <laughs> for a reason. Anyhow, so step number one, know your credit score. Let me just come back to you here for a moment. Step number one, know your credit score. Step number two, take advantage of what Credit Karma offers you and raise your credit score. And usually the easiest way to do it is by lowering your credit card utilization. Now, let me ask you, before we move on to the next steps, is this making sense thus far? Because if it is, do me a favor, click a like or a thumbs up. When you're on Facebook, click like. When you're on YouTube, hit a thumbs up because this way I know that we are going at the right pace, that we are don't go too fast, that we don't, don't go too slow because we have three more steps to go through. Okay, so hit like now. All right, step number three. Once you have a higher score, ask your bank for a line of credit. In my experience, the best chances is once your credit score is above 700. Now, go to the bank that you're currently banking with and ask for an unsecured line of credit. Now, they will ask you, how much do you want? And you said, I would like to have $100,000. Just tell them that you have an investment opportunity and you would like to establish a line of credit in case this investment opportunity comes through. In times like this, in times like right now, when interest rates are dropping, when banks need to hand out loans, in times like this, bankers are incentivized to hand out lines of credit. Now, 
the maximum you can get is a hundred thousand. You might not get a hundred thousand, but often they will give you seventy-five thousand, sixty thousand, sixty-five thousand. So they they usually give you a pretty good chunk. You don't have to prove what you need the funds for. Just say I have an investment opportunity come up. If they if they ask what is it, you say it's something in real estate. They like that. Trust me on this one. Anyhow, so you want to go to the bank where you usually bank, your house bank, and ask for an unsecured line of credit. When they say, okay, we can give you one, even if it is just 25,000 or 50,000, here's step number four. Step number four, go to other banks and do the same. You see, the chances of approval are highest from your bank since they know your history. And when you get a paycheck right now, they see that money is coming in. And once you're approved from your bank, go to a few other banks. I recommend three to five banks as quickly as possible. And do this within two to three days before the new line of credit shows up on your credit report. Now, here's what you do. Simply tell them that you have an offer for a line of credit over whatever number you have. So be honest there that you have an offer over, let's say, $75,000 from your bank and then tell them the condition. Say they offered me 7.5%, 8% interest rate. Then simply ask, can you match that? In times like this, this is why this is a huge opportunity. Banks want to give you a loan. So most probably they will match it. And then you simply say, sounds good. Let's do it. Now you got another 75,000 or maybe even more. Do this with three to five banks and try to get as close to $500,000 as possible. Now, important, these are lines of credit, which means they don't cost you anything until you actually use them. And at this point, you want to line up as much available credit as possible. It won't cost you anything. Now, in a moment, I'll tell you to use this responsibly. And please, I'm not a financial advisor. This is what I have done. So years ago, I'll, I'll give you an example here in just a few moments. Let's just go through these five steps and then I'll give you a very specific example from my life, how I use this. Now, step number five, after you have lined up your credits here, and again, you don't use them, you just have lined them up. So at a moment's notice, you can take advantage of it. So step number five, take advantage of opportunities. You see, after a market crash, there are plenty of opportunities. You can, for example, buy stocks at a discount. You can, usually after a market crash, buy real estate cheap. Just think 2008. Remember how cheap you could buy houses and even apartment complexes? And possibility number three, opportunity number three, you can even buy distressed businesses if that's what you want. The key is when there's blood in the streets, you want to have cash to take advantage of opportunities. And a line of credit gives you that cash. <laughs> Always wanted to do that. Hundreds. <laughs> okay, anyhow. And if you're smart in your investments, you can make a lot of money. You see, I used this exact method to buy an apartment complex for $2.3 million. I did this three years ago. So if you if you want to buy an apartment complex for $2.3 million, you have to bring $500,000 to the table. Out of the $500,000, $450,000 came from lines of credit. I only brought $50,000 in cash. Now, that was three years ago. Yesterday, I received an offer over $4.8 million for this apartment complex. Think about it. I bought it for $2.3 million and now I received an offer to sell it for $4.8 million. That's $2.5 million in profit in three years. And how much cash did I bring to the table? I believe it was 50,000, maybe a little bit more with closing costs, might have been 100,000, but most of it came from lines of credit, and then, of course, the rest was financed through a real estate lender. You see, the only reason 
Why I could take advantage of that opportunity is because I had my lines of credit lined up. So before we talk about the next steps and what to do now, let me ask you this. Is this helpful thus far? Because if it is, do me a favor, click on like. And also, if you think that this is cool information, feel free to share this video with anybody who you feel could benefit from this information. All right. So let's talk about the next steps. Right now is a fantastic time to take advantage of this opportunity. So do it now. Follow these five steps and start with step number one today. Sign up with Credit Karma and find out what your credit score is and then work on improving your credit score over the next few weeks. You see, right now, let me just uh, switch back to the markets because I want to show you something cool. Right now, there's a 66% chance that the Fed will lower rates again at their meeting on April 29th, 2020. So that's what market participants are right now factoring in. They think in April, the Fed will lower rates again. And when they do, let me come back on the, on the screen here. See, when that happens, when they lower rates again, banks will get desperate to hand out loans. Be ready because this, what you have just learned is how the rich get richer. And here's the cool thing. You can do the same. I am recording this video on March 4th. So you do have a few weeks to get your ducks in order, to know your credit score, to raise your credit score by lowering your credit card utilization, to go to the banks and be ready when the Fed lowers interest rates again and banks are getting desperate to hand out loans. You want to be there. This is how the game is played and that's how you can make a lot of money. And yes, of course, you should learn how to trade stocks because this way you will make money while the market is crashing. I'm not, I shouldn't say you will make money. This way you can possibly make money while the market is crashing and start building your capital up. All right, anyhow, that's what I wanted to sh share with you today. So let's see if there are any questions while I was going through this because that's why we are having coffee with Marcus here together that I can see um, how I can help you here. Let just, uh, let just see if there are any questions, if this makes sense. And if you have any questions for me right now, this is where we spend a few more minutes here together that I can answer it again. This is a method that I personally did several times, several times, and it works like a charm. And right now I will do the same. See, the key is when money is cheap, you want to borrow money and make it work for you. Now, important, you have to make super smart investments. I can help you with that. If you would like to know, just leave a comment and uh, I'll, I'll respond to the comments. We can talk about this. Okay, anyhow, so I see a lot of highs. John from Australia, Lorena, Andrea, so good to see you all. Stocks versus options. Okay, so I wanna skip the high because <laughs> so good for you to be here. And uh, so Flipper is asking a great question. Flipper Fire, have you made on video on making a budget? Kind of. Here's the deal. I personally believe making a budget is the wrong way to approach it because there are people out there that tell you, yeah, you know what? You shouldn't drink your latte every day. You shouldn't go to Starbucks. You shouldn't go out and trust me this way. You'll never get rich. I have made a video that I'll link to also in the description. Why this is actually not smart advice. You need, instead of making a budget, you need to find a way to make more money. Think about it this way. So flipper, I know that this is the advice that you hear often. Ah, oh, you should make a budget. You, you should spend less than you make. No, here's what you need to do. You need to find a way to make more money. That's how the game is played. This is what the smart people do. Trust me. I mean, I do not know any millionaire who became a millionaire by making a budget and by not drinking his 
fancy latte every day while they were poor. You need to find ways to make more money. I'll have a video on this, so it's a great question. Uh, so think about this way. And there's three ways to make more money. I can tell you this already. Learn how to trade stocks and options, invest in real estate, or learn how to run a business. These are the three ways to make money. But great question. Okay. So, um, John is asking, short the banks? Not yet. <laughs> I mean, it's a great question. Again, banks are usually the ones that are being hurt when interest rates are being lowered because at some point they need to pass it through. If they don't pass lower interest rates through to their customers, to these kind of loans, they will get in trouble. What do you think? Why does the Fed lower the interest rate so that the banks can pump more money into the system? Because this way, investing starts and that's good for the economy. So the banks have to pass on these savings. Okay. Uh, Regina, Regina said uh, they will make more money on volume. Exactly. As interest rates are going lower, that's when banks start being more lenient and handing out loans. Again, not for your new TV, not for your new car, maybe for your new car. Yeah, this is when interest rates probably drop to 1.2% for a car or something like this. But you want to be smart. This is why you want to go for lines of credit because this way, as I did, you can at some point buy an apartment complex for millions and then say it for say <laughs> sell it for even more millions and make more money. Okay, good. Um, John said sooner or later the rates will go up. Later than sooner. Trust me on this one. I mean, again, this were uh, this is a great resource. See the uh, the CME Group Fed Funds tool. It tells you what market participants are thinking right now. What is the likelihood? Of another rate drop and you see they think that the uh, that the Fed will drop rates to 75.75 to 1 percent there's a 66 percent chance so John you're right at some point they will go up again but I think it's rather later than sooner here's the deal uh, right now we have the coronavirus going on I mean this is the scare right now and we do not yet know what impact the coronavirus will have on the economy. Right now, it's completely unknown. You just see right now, airlines are being hurt because people are traveling less. And what airlines do right now, they just give you cheap tickets, right? They say, okay, travel with us, please. We want to have a butt in a seat. We don't want to fly empty airplanes through the, through the United States or even through the world. <clears throat> So they are hurting. Manufacturers are hurting. Apple already said we are hurting because we don't get the supplies. I mean, you hear it from more and more company, but right now they cannot yet quantify it. Right now you hear uh, that uh, companies are telling people to stay home, to work from home. What does this mean? Nobody's driving cars anymore. So we have uh, less consumption of gas and fuel, right? I mean, there's, there's a whole lot going on. And... Uh, it will take weeks and months before we know what the impact is. And during this time, I believe interest rates will go lower. Anyhow, good, good comment here. Good comment. All right. So uh, let me just uh, go. You, you're leaving so many comments. I love it. It's fantastic. Um, okay. Okay. The height is say, pay American Express $550 a year for the privilege of having one of their credit cards. I don't think so. Well, think about it this way. If you could get, um, I believe the spending limit that I have on only one of these American Express is around $250,000, maybe $270,000. If you could be able to, to get $270,000, would you be willing to pay $550 for this? I think it's a good deal. And uh, these American Express cards, they have tons of other perks. I, I mean, if you travel just a little bit, trust me, it's well worth it. But but again, I mean, no worries. If you don't want to play this game, that is fine. I'm just telling you how the game is played, what I do personally. I said, I have two of these cards. Yes, yeah, so I'm paying probably $1,200 a year. But again, with both cards combined, I believe that I have... Uh, $400,000 in credit or something like this. And again, when you use this in the smart way, this can make you a lot of money. So um, see, this uh, goes back to what Flippe asked earlier. Don't think about saving pennies. 
don't don't get busy picking up pennies uh, or, or stumbling over dollars to pick up pennies. I think that's what they say, right? I mean, see it in the bigger picture. See it in the bigger picture. I, I just told you how I used this method that I told you uh, to generate $2.5 million in profit. So do you think I'm concerned about $550 a year? But again, personal choice, right? I mean, I'm just sharing what works for me. You take what works for you and you just leave the rest. That's absolutely fine. Okay. All right. So Regina is asking, do we use cash for purchases? Um, for investments, not for purchases. Okay. So for example, if you want to, even if you want to buy an investment property, a house, uh, when you buy your own house, you only need two, three, five percent down. When you buy an investment property, you need to bring twenty thousand dollars to the table, uh, twenty percent to the table. So, if you want to invest in a, into a three hundred thousand dollar home, you have to bring sixty thousand dollars to the table. Now, once you invest in commercial property, aka apartment complexes, it doesn't matter where the money is coming from. All the lender wants to see that at closing you can write a check over the twenty percent. That's a story for a different video, but I'll tell you more about this. See, um, we're all so used to thinking about how we bought our own home and how it had to be seasoned money, right? How how you needed to make sure that the money was in the, the down payment was in the savings account for three months. Once you start investing hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions, the game is completely different. Trust me on this one. <clears throat> okay, so very, very cool. Okay, so Pam, Pam says bought three houses during the last market crash. Pam, awesome, good for you. You want to be ready if it gets worse. Now, if the market bounces back up, great, no worries. Here's the cool thing: once you have these lines of credit, usually they don't take it away from you. You can only get more lines of credit, and if you don't use them, you don't pay for these lines of credit. You only pay for them once you start using them. Anyhow. So, congratulations. Good for you. Okay. John Best said, blood in the streets. There's no blood in the streets just yet. Trust me on this one. I believe it'll get worse. We'll see. Only time will tell. I mean, <laughs> who am I? I'm not that smart that I can predict the market, but uh, based on what I see and based on my experience in the market, that's what I think. I believe it'll get worse before it gets better. Good, good, good. Um, Junior is asking a great question. Would you need a high income to be approved for unsecured lines? You see, when the economy does well, when there's no blood in the streets, yes, you do. Once banks get desperate, once banks see that interest rates are getting lower and lower and lower, and they need to, get money back into the market. This is when they lower their criteria. Now, of course, the most important thing here is usually your credit score. And here's the cool thing, Junior. I mean, even if you only get, let's say, $25,000 or $35,000, important, don't use it and say, woohoo, I'm buying a new car, I'm buying a new boat. No, use it in the responsible and smart way. Okay. And once you start this, even if you start smaller uh, and buying just one house, you don't have to buy an apartment complex for two or three million. Just start with one real estate, uh, with one investment property, or do it like Pam did, that you do three. I mean, right? Just get started somewhere. And Junior, here's the thing. You will never know until you ask. And that's a cool thing. Just go. Make sure that you know your credit score. Make sure that your credit score is above 700 then go to your bank, go to the bank where you're at right now and ask them and you'll be surprised. Now, what I found that usually you have higher chance of success with local credit unions. So if you have been, uh, if you have been with a local credit union, they are usually a little bit more lenient because they need to pump money in the market. All right, good. Fantastic. So um, Rob is asking, will this work for retirees? Yes, I believe so. You see, here's, here's the deal. Try it. G give it a shot, right? I, I mean, it doesn't cost anything. That's a great thing. Right now, 
Right now, you can call your credit card company and say, hey, can you raise my limit? And again, I will have a cheat sheet for you that I post in the, des uh, in the description here. If you do it the right way, they either say yes or no. And there's a 50-50 chance that they will say, sure, <laughs> right? Yeah, we can, we can raise this. And uh, this, when they do, it will lower your credit utilization and therefore it will automatically uh, get you a higher account. What did I say? How many accounts do I have? Uh, 32. Was it 32 or 52? I don't know, because it doesn't matter, right? If you don't use the credit, it doesn't cost you anything. Anyhow, so I'm just uh, logging in here. Yeah, there's like 52 accounts or something like this. Anyhow, okay, great question. Um, let's see. Uh, the question is, how much money do you, does one need as a cushion for investing? Well, again, the rule of thumb is uh, if you want to invest in real estate, uh, you need to bring at least 20% to the table. So if you want to buy a $200,000 house, it would be $40,000. If you live in California and want to buy an $800,000 or a million dollar house, it would be $160,000 to $200,000. Really depends what you want to do. And again, please don't take this as investment advice. I'm sharing what worked for me. I'm. Uh, this is what I tell my friends. This is what I tell my family to do. And I thought, I share this with you because I kind of feel that you're part of the family, right? <laughs> so anyhow, good, good, good. Um, so Mark is saying, how can we find a bottom? I've tried with indicators and it works. Absolutely. I mean, you know that I like to use the three indicators, um, RSI, Stochastics and MACD. And I said earlier, I mean, I don't want to make this video about the indicator, so I will post a link to the video where you see everything in detail in the description so that you can watch this later. Okay. So what is the best stock to invest in right now? You see right now, stay out of the market. Wait, wait, wait until it all shakes out. I mean, it's a great question, but let's make sure it all shakes out right now. Again, today the markets were up four and a half percent. Tomorrow they might be down again. Let me just bring this up here on the screen. See, this is what we saw this week. Last week, bam, down, going up. Then on Monday, we were up pretty much the same, 5%. Yesterday, we crashed down 3%. See it right here, right? Today, we're up again. Let's see what happens tomorrow. So right now, I would probably stay on the sidelines and just wait until this craziness uh, subsides a little bit because it is definitely craziness, but great question. Okay, good, okay, so, I was asking, I'm from Brazil, would like to start trading in the US. Which broker would you recommend? Um, you see, use one of the mainstream brokers. Do not, do not use Robinhood. Robinhood, I don't know if you have seen it. They had a huge outage on Monday. They had a huge outage on Tuesday. The owners of Robinhood came out and said yesterday, yeah, we are having a problem. Expect more outages. I mean, honestly, if right now you have any money in Robinhood, Get out of there. I mean, they just said it in a public statement. It's from them. It's where they said we need to upgrade our infrastructure and we expect more outages to come. So if they've said it, why are you still with them? So go with TD Ameritrade, Interactive Brokers, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, any of the mainstream brokers, they will be just fine. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So... Let's see, David is asking, can I do the same trick in India? Don't know, never been to India, don't know the Indian banking system. So, I mean, try it. That's a cool thing, it doesn't cost anything, right? I mean, this, this is a way to get hundreds of thousands of dollars without it costing you anything. You're welcome, <laughs> right? All you need to do is go to a bank and ask. Worst thing they can do, say no. And then you say, okay. Then you can ask them, what do I need to do to get an unsecured line of credit of 100,000? And they will tell you because they have their cheat sheet. They know exactly what are the criteria and they will tell you, well, you know what? You need to improve your credit score by 50%. You need to have $1,000 more income, whatever it might be. That's a cool thing. Don't worry. Just do it. I, you see, that's why I always say, if you just take action, you will be surprised. The, the, the world will open up to you. And again, ask a banker, ask a banker, say, hey, I would like to have a line of credit of $100,000. I have an investment opportunity come up. 
How can I get it? What do I need to do? And they'll tell you. Okay. Good. Um, so, is the interest rate fixed on a line of credit? Usually it is. Usually it is. And often it is bound to the so-called prime rate, which is the Fed fund rate. So it's usually prime rate plus, let's say, 6% or prime rate plus 5%. So this means that as interest rates get lower, usually the interest rates on the line of credit get lower. But yes, the interest rate on a, of a line of credit in the United States, it's usually fixed. I mean, all of the lines of credit that I have that I used for this, they were fixed. Okay, uh, we're going to spend... Uh, gonna spend five more minutes how does that sound because uh, there are some great questions Antonio is asking how uh, would you buy fix-up properties or move-in ready properties uh, Antonio I have I've done two fixer uppers the first one worked like a charm made eighteen thousand dollars in a matter of uh, six weeks the second one um, I'll probably make four hundred thousand dollars on it and it has been a freaking nightmare so I personally probably will not do any fixer uppers. Not saying that it doesn't work, but uh, the first one was easy money and the second one is a nightmare project. Now admit it, $18,000 in six weeks is nice. $400,000 in profit is nice, but honestly, this has been a project going on for three years. So I can make more money than $400,000 in three years. Do it, investing in different properties, but great question. But hey, uh, for some fixer uppers work great, but also I'm not handy. I, I'm not the kind of person who is going in there and uh, is putting sheetrock on there or or even painting. These hands are made for typing. These hands are made for pressing buy and sell. These hands are made for YouTubing of who can help me. <laughs> okay, anyhow. So um. Tina is asking, how does the interest work with the line of credit? Very easy. Only if you take money out, you're paying interest rate on the money that you take out. So let's say that you have a line of credit of $100,000, but you only take $20,000 out. You only pay interest rate on the $20,000 that you took out, not on the amount that you are approved. It's like a credit card. Think about it really like a, a credit card, just on a different level, right? Um, so it's usually an account where you can just withdraw cash or write checks. So super easy. Um, and yes, you only pay on the money that you're using. And as soon as you pay back, the clock stops. So pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Okay, good. I think Ernesto is uh, asking a great question. Can I use a line of credit for the down payment on a multifamily? That's what I did. Again, once you get into multifamily units, it's a whole different game. That's when it's played differently. I will do another Coffee with Marcus on that one. What do you think? I, I will show you what I have learned about investing in multi multifamily units. Uh, I will show you the, the size that I usually like to invest in, why I choose this size, why I'm investing in certain properties, what I would not invest in. So if this is interesting to you, just leave me a comment and say yes or, or click on like right now because this way I know that you're interested in this and then I'll prepare a video like this and I just want to make sure that I have the real numbers and that I can show you the statements. Um, so we will get there. Okay, let's see. Couple of more questions. Um, let me just see. Uh, Eric, I know that you're asking me something. Where's Eric's question? Can't find it that quickly. There's so many, so many questions here, but it's great. Okay. Um, Flipper is saying, I'm 15. Should I ask my dad to help me with this? Yes. My son is 16. Trust me. I mean, obviously, he cannot go into a bank and do this, but he already knows how the game is played. Uh, you know what? I think it is fantastic that at a young age, you're watching this type of videos. I mean, think about it. Kids like you usually watch different types of videos, right? Like, what is it? Dude Perfect? <laughs> or, or play video games? I mean, Flipper, I really, really congratulations. Um, it's great that you're that you're right now spending 45 minutes with me to learn 
how to make money, right? And some of the things I do believe that you need to get your dad involved. So share this video with your dad, right? Say, hey, you don't want to watch this? Uh, look at this. What do you think? Okay, so involve your dad and uh, drop me an email. Um, I want to know how you're doing. Stay in touch, okay? So really, really good. Okay, to confirm, would it be better to get lines of credit now or wait to see if the Fed does in fact lower interest rates again in two weeks? Honestly, um, I would wait a little bit. Right now, the shock just happened yesterday, right? I mean, we are recording this video on March 4th. On March 3rd, the Fed lowered interest rates. So I would honestly just right now get ready to do this um, and, and give it a few more weeks until banks really get a little bit more desperate to lend out money. It doesn't hurt to ask now, I believe, and again, that's my personal opinion, I don't know, but I believe that you will get better deals in a couple of weeks from now. So maybe towards end of March, in April, or definitely if, if all of this gets worse, which I expect it will, because once um, next quarter, companies will report their quarterly earnings. So in April, Companies will let us know how badly they got hurt with the coronavirus in this quarter. And uh, this is when we will actually know what impact it has. And I feel, I believe that the Fed will act then again. Anyhow. So. Good, good, good. All right. I believe that we answered most of your questions. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a couple of questions. Okay, that I that I want to answer. Marina is asking, how come the number of accounts don't hurt you? Uh, let me show you. I will show you exactly how it comes that the number of accounts don't hurt me. So I'm logging into my my credit report again. And I'm sharing it with you here right now, and you see, here are you see in the in the front row, right up here. Here you see what has a high impact on your credit score. And the high impact is your payment history, the credit card use, and derogatory remarks, right? So these are these are the ones that are really hurting your credit score. So, I mean, if you filed for bankruptcy, you have a problem. Uh, so then the credit age is medium impact. Now, here's why my credit age is only four years and eight months. As you can see, that's the average age of your open accounts. I open new accounts all the time, right? Again, when there's blood in the streets, you want to have as much cash as possible. Now, I do have cold hard cash. We talked about this. That's always good to have. But you also want to have lines of credit to jump on opportunities when they are there. So it has a low impact, same as hard inquiries. Just don't don't overdo it. Don't don't ask every single day. Can I have more money? Can I have more money? Right. Bundle it. Just be smart. I mean, really, Credit Karma is a great resource and they can help you with that. OK. Good. All right. Claire says, I would like to hear you do a presentation on investing on multifamily. I'll do this. OK, good. Fantastic. All right. I know that we spend a little bit longer than we wanted to. Usually I like to, to keep this coffee with Marcus to, to really having a coffee. I mean, today you probably needed two coffees. <laughs> Anyhow, but I also want to make sure that I, that I answer your question. Now, of course, this video will stay up. And uh, here's what I'm going to do. I, I will ask my, my video editor, Asia, uh, who is a genius. Who, who likes the editing of my videos? Not, not this one that is live, but the other ones that you have seen, the ones that are not live. If you like this right now, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up and, and leave a comment and it'll say great editing because Asia, my, my video editor, she would love to see that uh, you enjoy how the videos are edited. Again, we we're talking about the shorter videos. So I will ask Asia to make this a shorter version uh, because Flipper, as, as you said, if you want to share this with somebody or show it to somebody, I'll make sure that I condense it to a, let's say, eight to 10 minute video. How does that sound? Okay, good. Hope you have a great rest of the afternoon. Today, the markets went up. Yesterday, the markets were down. Monday, they were up. I mean, they're whipsawing right now. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Anyhow, looking forward to talking to you very soon. Take care and have a great afternoon.